Alrighty, it's yeah, big crowd. It's 6:32. We'll start our regular meeting. Is this on? Yeah, there it goes. This chair is short. All right, so director comments, Susan. Uh, and by the way, um, uh, everyone's here, but Mark Atherton, he's out of the country. The next, this meeting and next. So. Nothing. Nothing. Still trying to get my legs and anything that you need some assistance on or want to fill me in on. Sure. Help me out. Uh, just a reminder that our Jamin and Jarbo is starting April 1st, our first concert series, which will be the Fab Five. Yeah, Ronnie? Uh, just w went down to uh, Town Center on Saturday when they had the um, farmer's market, I guess, there. The dust was horrible. The vendors were doing great. There was a huge crowd out there, a lot of vendors, probably more than I've seen before. Uh, I didn't have time to go during the thing, but I went as it was over. The last guy packing up was the guy that's been, been going to it since we had it at the original location over there on Skipper's Lot. He makes the jewelry, uh, and uh, he lives here on the island, I believe. He said he had a gr it was gr great for him, but you know everything was just covered in dust. It was horrible. And then I talked to our business owner there, Benny, and he said the same thing. It was blowing into his place and making a big mess, so that, that is a real problem. Uh, nothing today. Jesse. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you again to Mike. Good job on palm trees. It seems uh, the community is very excited about that, so I want to give you kudos again for that. Uh, speaking of wind, not that it really applies to us, but I have a few friends that own SDRs down in um, Galveston Island, and they're all dealing with sand fleas. So <laughs> oh. <laughs> if any of you... If any of you have interest down there, you might want to check uh, check that property. So, uh, those big south winds. So. That's all. Nice, just. Uh, and I'll echo what you said, Mike. Good job on the trees. It seems very well received. I know that was a lot of work. Uh, I wanted to thank everyone for coming out to the workshop last week. Uh, I know everyone's time is precious, but uh, hopefully it was a, a good use of our time and everyone got a little bit out of that. Uh, also, I talked to Galveston Bay Brewing, one of the owners today, and uh, I think they got their uh, certificate of occupancy Friday. Um, and Brad, if you want to hop right into the uh, city update, you may have something to elaborate on there. Sure, yeah. The, just to kind of confirm what you said, Fire Marshal did con, uh, complete their s final inspection on Friday. I think they've got a few punch list items they've got to finish up, but they're rapidly approaching uh, opening up. Um, they did share the concerns about the parking lot as well and the dust. It's, they're having a battle as well and kind of hoping to look to get some resolution there soon. Uh, the other important thing I wanted to kind of update everybody was on the demolition of the paint and body shop. I did meet a contractor on site this morning to kind of look at that. I got the A11 was done last week. The challenge I'm running up against right now is uh, center point getting them to call me back to get the cut off at the uh, at the street. But once we get that done, we'll be looking to bring a number back on for demolition there. Hopefully. It's well under the 15,000 that was previously approved here. Uh, they did say they could probably have it done in probably about three days time frame. Uh, they did talk to me that what they would like to do when they set it up, that little section, probably about a 65 foot section around the building, they're wanting to rope off and kind of coordinate off with the dumpsters over there, just kind of keep everybody safe. And I told them that would be fine as long as they didn't shut down the driveway coming off of 2094 for that excess. Uh, probably the other thing that I've been asked to give an update on is the transportation alternative grant uh, that was originally submitted as basically, uh, first let me back up, this is a partnership between League City, Kima, and Clear Lake Shores. Uh, League City submitted an application for the south side of the road. We submitted north side along with a pedestrian grant. TxDOT, in their infinite wisdom, has decided because the the threshold, and you guys were on the same calls with me, so jump in here if I miss something, but uh, 
They're, they have decided that they had a $5 million threshold, so they have combined the north sidewalk project with the south side project. From what I am seeing, and this probably somewhat uh, speaking from personal opinion, you guys let me know if you have different, but there are about nine obstacles on the north side that creates a real challenge for us doing our portion. One of the requirements for the grant is that it's got to be little to uh, no readiness in, in, in to get the project underway. Uh, we have got a lot of uh, utilities that's got to be relocated. We've got uh, inclines or slopes to deal with. We've got right of ways to acquire. Personally, I see that going to be a real challenge to, to meet the requirements and, and get that out. Another big concern that I've got is we are on the ropes for the, any engineering costs to make this uh, develop a plan, and it's not costs that can be uh, recovered and put into the application process. So to me, I don't know that the risk is, is worth it there. Uh, kind of looking for direction from between council and the ADC board as far as whether we pull forward. We have got a plan. It's currently we've got a meeting scheduled with League City, Kima, and the Clark Shores on the 22nd and have that discussions and we're going to see how this is really impacting League City. My concern is that if we stay in with that combined uh, that it could kill League City's project portion as well. But at the same time we need to see because of that $5 million mark they may be relying on us to hit that $5 million. So we all want to kind of get on the same page and determine some direction from there. I think uh, you guys think of anything I missed on the calls or Ronnie anything there? And I think from have we heard have we heard anything on the Shell Bottom Park uh, permit approval boat ramp? No, we really don't need this, but I guess for the courting, uh, I have yet to follow up. But that's one of my goals this week, and I hope to get to report back soon. But that's one of those things that hadn't made it there yet. So one of the and and I know you were kind of dropped in the grease when you got here, but. Um, one of the things I was concerned about a couple of meetings ago was the timing because um, if it plays out the way that I suspect it will, the boat ramp will be out of commission in the busiest part of the boating season. And uh, one thing, and I didn't know if he ever had a chance to, to, to do it, uh, the interim city admin was going to look into seeing if there was a, a way to technically delay the permit process. and. I get it. We're probably still several months away from, you know, swinging hammers or anything. But um, I can only I can only begin to fathom the unrest in the city if that boat ramp is put out of commission in June, July, August. So um, that I'll is keep, one of keep that in the back of your mind. I guess. Sure. That, I remember bringing that concern up on one of the meetings that I attended, and I do have that sp specific question on there: is okay. how much control do we have over that? So cool. hopefully, we'll get something in our favor. Great. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thanks, Brad. Moving on, do we have any unscheduled visitors? None? You're right, it's not quite standing room only, is it? All right, moving on to number five is the consent agenda. Uh, there's a lot on there because we didn't have a February meeting, uh, but it was the minutes. Uh, from a couple of different meetings, financials, check registry, two different months of financials. If we need to pull anything out or discuss, we can. If not, we'll move along. If you looked at the current cash on hand from uh, the financial packet, you can see we have just over $803,000 in cash in our two main accounts. So. All right, nothing will move on to item number six, the resolution. And we did this not too long ago, um, so the resolution is probably fresh in everyone's mind. This is basically a resolution, uh, and I'll go ahead and read it, uh, but it's a resolution to get Brad as a uh, check, sh check signer on our accounts. So it's resolution 2023-09, uh, a resolution of the Board of Directors of the Economic Development Corporation for the City of Clear Lake Shores establishing the approved the list of persons authorized to sign checks on behalf of the corporation. 
put your name on there, but I guess that's for me to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2023-09, a resolution of the board of directors of the EDC to approve list of persons authorized to sign checks on behalf of the corporation, in this case, new city admin, Brad Goody. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion needed? Okay. Take a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Approved unanimously. Yes, Sorry, I'm taking notes because Mark's not here. Okay, we'll move on. Uh, number seven, discussion on possible action to create an administrative services agreement to reimburse the city for management, financial, and administrative services. Uh, this is the reason why our packet was 40-something pages. <laughs> uh, there was uh, numerous examples in here. This is something that was brought up uh, a long time ago. Uh, I don't know if it was Brent that uh, brought it up initially, but also Brent, our interim city uh, admin, brought this up to me saying that, you know, it's definitely something we need to discuss and it's very common. Uh, most economic development corporations have it. And it's, it, it could be structured many, many different ways. There was a couple examples in Elspeth packet, but it, it's essentially just reimbursement from the EDC to the city for their administration uh, and management time. So, uh, city secretary, um, CPA, uh, city administrator, et cetera. Did everybody look at those examples? Yeah, we, we had this before. This isn't the first time we've had this. When Chief Shelley was here, city oh, administrator, yeah. we had this for a number of years. And I can't remember what year we discontinued it, and there was no real big problem with it or anything very common. In Kima they have it and really the, the agreement is no big deal. It's how much yep. money that they take out of EDC to give to the city that uh, is the question and how you measure that and how people feel about it. Uh, but you know we do um, in a lot of cities, uh, the city secretary does some things and of course we got the accounting. Now we have uh, some help over here with our city administrator. We've got you know some hopefully some help over here with uh, electronics and stuff, so it's not unusual to do that. And Kima, which their uh, EDC brings in about $1.1 million a year, where ours brings in about, what, 300000 a year, 250 or something. They're, I think they've got their fee set at $3,000 a month, and they have a lot of projects going on and a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff happening, so they're, they're, there's a lot of moving parts to, to what they're doing over there. So I think the I think the idea of having it is good. Um, the question is then, you know, how much money do we want to give the city? <laughs> so I had this on there initially just before uh, we get too into the weeds. You know, this wasn't necessarily to come up with a mountain, you know, right. tonight. But this is just a hey, this is very common. You know, this is something we need to look into. Um, our interim city administrator thought it was really important, and and like you said, it. It can be structured a lot of different ways. It can be a project based. So, you know, if you know you have a lot of projects, and that would be maybe something that we would think about since we're small and, you know, we may not have a lot of projects uh, that take a lot of the city staff time during, you know, a certain fiscal year, but other times that may change. So, some EDCs have it where it's, you know, okay, here's $1,000 a month, and that's just what they do, and they look at it every year. Uh, Dickinson, what you saw was $275,000 annually, which is, um, you know, 23, what is it, 23 grand a month. Um, but and they agree to do that for the next four years. But they, they have a full-time executive director on their EDC, and they may be putting him through their payroll system, so it may be an effect. Right, so the pay the city does all the payroll and all that, and then you see so just right. So that may be really yep. just a cost recovery. It, that's what it is. That's, oh, exactly, it is? Okay. that's exactly what it is. Um, some places like this rolling wood, I included that on there. Uh, it's really small um, outskirts of downtown Austin, but it's probably similar to, to what we see. But they just come up with our, but when they do their budget workshop with the city every year, they just come up with an amount and 
It can be a monthly or a one annual payment, and then they worry about it the next year. Well, you could, yeah, again, you could, you could also do it, um, you know, like the lawyers do. You write hours, you know, what you spend time on. But probably the simplest is just to do a, a lump sum per month, and then you can kind of keep track of it if, it, if it's, yeah, if it gets out way out of whack, then we need to revisit it. Yeah. I, I don't think there's, I think the easiest way is just a flat fee. Yeah. We don't really have a way to track stuff. So what's wrong with the way we're doing it now? I'm just trying to. Well, it's basically money from one pocket to the other as far as the city is concerned, <laughs> yeah, right? right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> hey, the city can do more different things with the money than we can, so. I mean, it's so. I wanted to bring up something. Think, yeah, if we can bring it back to the next meeting, or we can discuss it but you know, in our budget workshops in a few but months. How does it work from the city's point of view? Is this money then going into the general fund, or is it going into payroll uh, accounts? So it goes in the typically uh, with us, it would probably go into the general fund, and then it's going to be the. Then going to be yeah, it would have to be, and then the city would have the discretion of deciding if they're going to use this. It's just another source of income. They don't so they don't so like set it aside for. No. So essentially, some of this money can be used. We, we've invited parks and uh, the parks committee to come up with, you know, things that they may, may need help with. Uh, obviously, the gate thing got uh, settled by the city now, so you know, this can then be easier used internally within the city instead of, you know, using EDC as a piggy bank. You know, it may be something, I mean, really the, the city, I mean, they would be able to do, the idea would be to, to disperse and use it toward, you know, the, the staff that's spending their time on our projects. Do but we do we pay for our own audit? I don't know. I, don't I know, you know, our attorney fees, you know, we pay direct, that hour's kept separately and mm -hmm. we pay that, but I don't know about the audit. I don't think we pay for our own audit. I think it's just blended into the city's. So, you know, a lot of that, I think, would go toward uh, accounting. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. No, we'll have, an a, we'll have to have outside audits, or, you know, how we have that. That's, that's what I'm saying. One, the same. So, the yeah, same so, we, so our fee can be covering both, you know, essentially. Part of both. Well, it's, you know, probably a discussion, this, you know, the city needs to, Kind of be thinking, well, how, you know, how much time do y'all spend on EDC projects? Or you know, we can look at it. We can try to annualize it. Maybe when we go to our next or our first budget workshop, I don't know when are those usually July, August-ish, something like that, to get ready for the end of the fiscal year. Maybe kind of keep track, and then we can bring this to the workshop and discuss. You know, we spend X hours. We think maybe this amount may be good for. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I wouldn't think it would be tracked like what you're saying, but I think it would, you know, after a certain amount of time, you're like, oh, I spend X amount of time on EDC, and then just look at what percentage that would be, and just to come up with the flat fee, I guess is what I was thinking. Because yeah, but some some look at their projects, like they know, they know what their upcoming projects are, and it's a very small percentage of that. And that's just but then example. you can say enhancement of life projects, are they... Mm, they are an EDC project as such, but it's also a city. Yeah. Sure. Oh, I think there's a lot of a lot of gray areas. There is, yeah. But I, I add to the agenda just as so we can think about it, and you know the city can think about it, and we can. It, it may be something that comes up. So we should table it until the budget time. Is that what you're saying? Sure. It was mainly just for discussion. Yeah. Is there any any further discussion or any input or? You keep, you for keep the time bringing being? up uh, projects. So just uh, in the commercial project world, admin costs are typically about 1% of contract value. So that may be a good starting point if we take our annual budget 
take 1% of that divided by 12, maybe that's the monthly disbursement, at least as a starting point yeah. for discussion. There's no more discussion. We can move on. Uh, item number eight, discussion and possible action to fund the relocation of the utility platform situated in the city-owned West Public parking lot. Ronnie, I put you, <laughs> put you on there. <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you, you had a lot of input um, a couple of meetings ago is kind of why I put you on there. But then Brad and I were actually just talking about it today, and there was some updates. I don't know if you wanted to update so us. That should say the main parking lot. I did put west parking lot, east parking lot. Thank you. The main parking lot. I think that one uses the one by Skippers. But you're right. It is the east parking lot, the main parking lot. So uh, the contractor I mentioned that I met with this morning for the demo is the GC for the brewery. Uh, I did mention today about relocating that, that there have been some discussions and approvals from Joel's perspective that we could utilize their platform. Austin's statement was there is not room on that platform, it cannot be done. Subsequently, there was another comments made uh, to Johnny that uh, there, it could be possible. So we're going to reevaluate that option. Uh, there were some preferences discussed as to relocating the wooden platform and the desires of where it's going to go and the concerns that it's going to take up probably a couple. We all know where we're located at. It's going to have to be on an elevated platform. And so it's, you know, who's going to give up the space to do it? Along with that, we've got some underground electrical that's going to have to be trenched and we're going to have to hire an electrician in to, to relocate that. It's not a matter of m moving the head because the, it does go down underground to the lights right now. Does anybody know about how far off that platform is from the body shop? Like 10, 15 feet? Uh, less. Oh, no, less? it's probably six feet from the body oh, shop. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yes, sir. And that just serves our parking lot lighting? That's it? As far as I know, yeah. And there may be wiring that goes to the potential monument signage at the front of the road. It seems like somebody Sprinkler mentioned it. There are two junction boxes out along the sidewalk. I guess I assume that's what we're talking about for signage mm -hmm. so I would say yes it goes but it, it from the property line it's probably 25 feet off of the property line the way I look at it is either it can go on the brewery's building um, or we're moving or we're going to be moving and or building a platform right next to the fence where the body shop is now and use up parking spaces not only that, but if we decide that that driveway um, where the body shop is now is the best entrance to the parking lot, should should that be the option, then the platform would be in the way. Right. Sure. But when we, you know, like we were discussing last week, you, you know, if uh, a consultant came in or whoever used and decides that closing off that entrance and using the one where the body shop is now is more efficient and safer for some reason. I don't, you know, I don't know. Do we need, strictly speaking, do we need an entrance from 2094 or can we channel everything through Tidelag Road? I, I know it's going to be a little I bit mean, busy, I think but... I think so. I think it's already, there's too many pedestrians. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the textile will have a lot to say about making that other one a driveway. We'll have to get their permission. So we're probably, the simplest thing is to leave what we have unless mm. there's some real big pickup. Yep. We, I mean, uh, this ties into the next point too, but um, we probably should have a contact with the various businesses and see if they can park on the, on the other lots for their employees. Yeah? They all seem to park next to the door, <laughs> which should be for the customers. Huh? Uh, you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but you know, I mean, it's kind of like 
Anyway, a friend of mine said he, he buys uh, malls, and what he does is goes out there before they open and checks out where the employees park. If they park next to the door, yeah, it's probably not a good uh, <laughs> buy. It's, a good, well, it's one of the signs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned that to one of our friendly uh, restaurateurs here, and he said he didn't like to see his uh, people get off work late with a lot of money because yep. they're wait waiters and waitresses and walk acro way across the parking lot. Yeah, so because they were going to get mugged, and I'm thinking, well, <laughs> if he's afraid of that, then we have other problems than parking. <laughs> right, exactly. So... Joel, he took me in inside and gave me a little tour of the brewery oh last God. week, and we talked about that a little bit. And he said he thinks they have enough parking within their fence on 2094 for the employees. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. Okay. You know, he's not sure if it's 100%, but if not, close. Mm -hmm. So he's aware of that situation. The thing is, we're going to be so short. Well, we are short parking, and anything could help, right? So. Because what we, yeah, what a friendly, we tr suggested they maybe to park over here, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can tell you that they're on the same page as we are of wanting every single possible spot yeah. along with the rest of the businesses. Yeah. But well the, they're... Mm -hmm. Skipper's really improving their parking lot to make it more parking. Yeah. We, we probably should have some information. Mm -hmm. To get out of that lot, um, it was like 80 something. Yeah, 15 percent now. Yeah. If we pave it, they said it. They said a larger number than that. I believe. Yeah, there was a larger number if we paved it because then we could stripe it. Then both, both of yeah. them. Yeah. Both lots. Both. It we would get between 20 and 30 I more parking spots. I think that's actually in the report. It is. That's it's it's like 20 or 30 spaces. Even more. 20 or 30 spaces. Yeah. And that didn't count the pro paint and body and all that mess that was in. So there's there's really nothing here, but what we may think about in the future is if that body shop comes down quick and you know everything gets going and we get an answer for the relocation. Um, you know, we we may have to go in a special meeting. That may be before our next meeting. Yeah. If I, if I could make a suggestion, if we end up tabling the relocation of the utility platform, okay, let's just say that it's just too expensive, it's not worth it. If we do move forward with paving, a good idea would be to put a couple of raceways from there to where we anticipate future relocation to be. So we already have utilities, we have conduits in the ground mm -hmm. that's relatively inexpensive to do. It's a precautionary right. measure, and if it never happens, then yeah. it doesn't, you know, it doesn't make a difference. But it's an easy expense if we end up paving. It would be a lot more expensive to saw cut and get rid of all the oh, concrete yeah. and trench and all that. If we go ahead and run conduits, just do like five, six-inch conduits, put some big I can't. Strings I, I can't imagine us not relocating it. Yeah, We're going to have to have bollards if we don't, because it'll be knocked over for... Oh, fencing, bollards, yeah. 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 yeah, it'll have to be... Oh, no, it's going to have to be moved. It's, um, it's going to have yeah. to be moved. No. No. Mm. But, it, but it brings up another point. If we need power somewhere else, you know, that's the time to run some conduits. Yeah. We can always just put a traffic cover on it and mm. know it's there. I mean, once the um, paint shop comes down, I mean, how many spots can we temporarily make out of that? Is there an employee door for the brewery that they can use some of that if they don't have enough parking on the back? I don't know. That's, that's a lot of parking for, mm -hmm. for employees, particularly if there's an entrance for them somewhere. That's what's out there now. It looks like it at least. Yeah, 
You mean across Marina Bay to the south? Oh, right. Sure, yeah. I think. I think the public will just. But didn't we do a intercity parking agreement? Did that, did that ever happen? I don't know how we formal that was. <laughs> we took yeah. a letter around. I don't know if we ever got it signed. I, I think we should because if if we can, hmm, the dare spots that we have should be for, for ideally for customers, right? So we need to see if we can, you know, make make some agreement at, at least. Maybe we should have them all together in the room here and talk about it. Well, if they're good business people, they're going to make sure that happens. We're not going to have to tell yeah, them. Yeah, but we may need to shove some of them because well they're a little bit combative. They're, they're mm -hmm. all they're all pretty sharp. The ones I know, they're, some of them are maybe a little lazy, but about. Uh, you know, monitoring it like Billy's mm. never here, so that he he won't know what happens. But that I can tell. But if they, Johnny, when they open parking for their employees right. versus our, our parking lot, they're not going to be focused on that. Oh, they well, I wouldn't hurt to mention it to them. Oh no, we need to they definitely. Th would help they've already mentioned it. Park in this they, we could do mm -hmm. this. They've already brought. They, they've already discussed that with you, right? They're going to try to Mike. They're going to try to get them up front. So they're sensitive to it. But like our business butler's courtyard, we're very, whenever we see employees park in the, where the prime parking is, we run them out. Our vendors, that's part of the job of running your business, you know, protecting your parking. Exactly. You know, but anyway, I think, but you're right. We need to mention it to them. They need yeah. to park as. It, it'll be, we need to reiterate. Yes, Marine or some, I mean, like you said, or even down at the body shop in that field out beside it, it's not full. But Maybe, maybe Brad, if you can uh, check and see if Brent left any file for this intercity. I want to make a comment. I spoke with Franklin that owns the body shop and about, you know, police parking there, public, whatever. He says, I'm assuming that after we close down, people are going to park there. Right. If, whether it's customers, employees, whatever, he's not going to have any control. <laughs> and I think that'll happen right. if people circle the block once and there's no parking they're going to take whatever they can find including skippers if it's open so but if we can use that for employees they'll be okay because they, they're going to drive home some of these other people may not be able to drive well, home how are you going to you know police that you put up a sign no. that says no parking except for i'm not talking about policing <laughs> and finding or anything but encouraging where the business owner would take yeah. take charge you know, like you know, ronnie said enforced. It's not in our. Yep. I mean, it should be logic, right? So should be. <laughs> well, I mean, we're kind of bleeding into item nine, so we can continue. Um, item nine is discussion and action, possible steps required to proceed with public parking lot upgrades. So, and you can kind of continue the parking discussion there. But uh, do we need to port this paving? Uh, do we need to bring that back to city council, or w yeah, we do. Okay. Well, the fir to me, the first thing is to demo the building. The second thing is to move the platform, and the third thing is to have the engineer or whoever's going to pave it come back out and give us a new bid to include the new area. So those are three steps, mm -hmm. and those can all be done uh, in a matter of weeks if we could get like Centerpoint on board. Uh, to do that and the contractor out. I, I think the steps before that is to make sure that the city council is behind it before we spend any more time with that. Mm. Well, we, we've Which got to do all those things. Then we've got to demo the building, right? That's already going to happen. All right, so that's that's step one. Step two is relocate the power, uh, the power deal. Mm -hmm. Step three is to get a new estimate from the deal. We can do all that without city council having to approve it. Then we take it to city council if there's any cost involved. You know, if we have to spend money on relocating the platform, we have to get city council to approve that, and then we'll have to get them to approve the paving estimate, the new estimate with the expanded area, right? I agree, and city council didn't reject it. They wanted to just delay it. Right. Because they wanted to yeah. make sure the finances. But city council can't do anything without what it's going to cost and what we're going to do. So and that's... And one thing that's changed too is that what that we didn't know was that if we don't spend this money we're getting back from FEMA or whoever it is, um, we lose it. Mm -hmm. And that would be silly. 
So who's going to, you're working on the demo, right? Yeah, I've got my staff on it. So we'll get. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got, we've got preliminary estimates already for the paper. So we've already approved that. So that can, that, that's a no brain, that's already done. So the next thing is relocate the power uh, thing, but if this, that can be simultaneously with getting a new estimate. Who would be good to get the 